Welcome back to Monetized History. I'm Daniel. This week we're talking about Abraham Lincoln, Durham Wheat, the Lincoln Memorial, and the Union Shield. For everyone joining us from Penny Haven, welcome. And if you haven't yet, you should check out their latest video where Michael's sorting through a bushel of wheat pennies. He's got a lot of great content. Look in the description for links. The front of the Lincoln cent is the longest used design in U.S. currency history. It debuted in 1909, the 100th anniversary of Lincoln's birth. It's the first U.S. coin to bear the likeness of a historical figure. Theodore Roosevelt was president at the time, and likely personally selected artist Victor David Brenner to create the design, as no other artists were considered for the project. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. He was born in the state of Kentucky, the frontier of the country at that time. He worked his way out of poverty to become a lawyer, politician, and in 1860, president. He is best remembered for suppressing the Southern Rebellion during the American Civil War, thereby preserving the Union, abolishing most forms of slavery by passing the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, and for being the first president to be assassinated in 1865. Brenner had previously sculpted Lincoln for a bronze plaque which, along with sculpting his likeness for the Panama Canal Commission medal, brought him to Roosevelt's attention. It's not known exactly which photographs of Lincoln Brenner used as his inspiration for the scent, but he had previously used photographs taken by Matthew Brady for his work on the Lincoln plaque, and it's likely he used the same images for reference. His initials can be found on the front of the coin at the base of Lincoln's bust. The reverse of the coin features the denomination in the center surrounded by two ears of wheat. At the time, U.S. wheat production was booming. In 1905, the population of the United States was over 80 million and over 30 million Americans lived on farms. The value of the wheat and wheat flour exported in 1910 was over $100 million, which would be over $1.5 billion today. At the time of the Lincoln Cent's release, the U.S. produced nearly a third of the world's wheat and was the second largest exporter. To celebrate Lincoln's 150th birthday in 1959, the reverse of the scent was redesigned by the U.S. Mint. The design of mint engraver Frank Gasparro was used, which featured the front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., though other designs of his were considered as well. The Lincoln Memorial was dedicated in 1922 in front of a crowd of more than 50,000. The inner chamber of the memorial is dominated by a 19-foot-tall statue of Lincoln sculpted by Daniel Chester French that sits atop an 11-foot-tall pedestal. The memorial has been the site of numerous concerts and marches since its dedication, most notably the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, at which Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech. Gasparro would go on to become the chief engraver of the United States Mint from 1965 until 1981, designing the Susan B. Anthony dollar, the Eisenhower dollar, and the reverse of the Kennedy half dollar. Gasparro's initials can be seen at the lower left of the memorial. The design of the reverse of the scent was changed again in 2010 after four commemorative issues honoring Lincoln's 200th birthday in 2009. A contest was held, and from a pool of 13 designs, the Commission of Fine Arts chose a design featuring 13 sheaves of wheat, although this design was withdrawn from consideration for being too similar to a German coin from the 20s. Their second selection was a design featuring the American flag, but this too was rejected. The final design was chosen by the Citizens Coinage Advisory Committee and was designed by Lyndall Bass and engraved by Joseph F. Minna. Her design features a Union shield in the center with the scroll bearing the denomination on top of it. The Union shield is as old as the United States and is part of the coat of arms. The 13 vertical stripes represent the original 13 colonies, which symbolically support the federal government represented by the chief wherein E Pluribus Unum is written, out of many, one. The initials of both Bass and Minna can be found near the bottom of the shield. That's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit Penny Haven to see a trove of wheat pennies and see some of his best finds. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.